We're going to be revisiting the idea of a relation, and we're going to be looking at how to find the inverse of a relation or a function. The concept of finding an inverse is very simple. If I give you a relation r, or a function r, and it has a given domain and a given range, if you want to find the inverse, you simply switch the domain and range. That means that the x values of the beginning relation or function become the y values of the inverse. So we're simply switching the domain and range. Now remember the difference between a relation and a function is that in a relation we do not necessarily have every x going to only one y. So if you look here, this relation r, 1.2 goes to 1, 1.4 goes to 1, and so forth. So every x value is going to only one y value. So this will actually be a function. But if you look at the inverse, 1 goes to 1.2 and 1.4. So I have an x value in the domain that goes to two different y values, which makes the inverse not a function. If they were both functions, then they would be called inverse functions. So here I'm given a relation f with a given domain and a given range, and I want to find its inverse. Now remember, it's as simple as just switching the x and y values. So the x values of the inverse are now going to be negative 1, 0, 2 and 3, and the y values are going to be 0, 2, 3, and 4. So all we did was we took the domain of the relation, and that's now the range of the inverse, and we took the range of the relation, and that's now the domain of the inverse. When given a relation or a function in graphical form and asked to find the inverse, the process is very similar. First we just write down the coordinates, so I have 0, negative 1, I have 2, 0, I have 3, 2, and then I have the point 4, 3. So when finding the inverse, I simply just switch the x and y values. So the points of my inverse are going to be negative 1, 0, 0, 2, 2, 3, and 3, 4. So graphing these, This is going to be the inverse of the relation S. Algebraically finding an inverse works exactly the same way. We literally switch the x and the y values. So everywhere I see a y, I will put an x. Everywhere I see an x, I will put a y. Now once you switch the x and the y, you then have to solve for y. So this is going to be my inverse of the original function. Now notice that I started with a linear function. If I graph this, this would be a line. And I ended with a linear function once I did the inverse. So both of these are going to be functions. So they are inverse functions. In this example, we're going to do exactly the same thing. We are going to switch the x and the y value. And then we're going to solve for y. Now remember to get rid of a square, we must square root. When I'm drawing the square root, I have to put plus or minus. So this is going to be the inverse of the original function here. Now let's look at the inverse. For every x value, will I have only one y value? Well, let's think about that question. Let's say I had x equal to 1. Well, if I plug that in, I get y equals plus or minus square root 1 plus 1. Well, if I evaluate that, the square root of 1 plus 1 is the square root of 2. But I actually have positive square root of 2 and negative square root of 2, which gives me two answers. So the inverse here is not going to be a function. When talking about the inverse of a function, we use this notation here f to the negative 1 power. Now we don't say f to the negative 1 power. We say this as the inverse of f or f inverse. So either one can be used to describe this notation.
Now normally when we use f of x, it is only used for functions. But if I were to have f inverse of x, that does not mean that whatever I'm stating is a function. It could just be a relation. So now we want to find the inverse of this function and also look at the domain and range. So remember, when we're talking about domain, we're talking about possible x values that I'm allowed to plug into my function. Well, the only time I have trouble is any time I have a radical in my function or whenever I have a fraction in my function where the denominator is not allowed to be 0. So f of x equals the square root of x minus 2. I have a radical here. Therefore, I have to look at what values of x will make what's underneath negative. So I set what's underneath it must be bigger than or equal to zero. I'm allowed to be zero. Zero will not give me any problems here. So solving, I get x has to be greater than or equal to two. So my domain is all real x that are greater than or equal to two. Now range refers to what y values do I get when I plug in my x values. So if I'm starting at two, so x greater than or equal to 2, so the smallest number I'm allowed to plug in is 2. When I do that, 2 minus 2 is going to give me 0. So the smallest y value I'm going to achieve is 0. Now as I start plugging in x values that are bigger than 2, I'm just going to get y values that are bigger than 0. So my range is going to be all y that are greater than or equal to 0. Now to find the inverse, we just switch x and y. Now remember, f of x is the same as saying y. So switching x and y to solve for y, we have to get it out of the radical, which means I'm going to square both sides. Solving for y. So y is equal to x squared plus 2. So f inverse of x is equal to x squared plus 2. So this is my inverse function. Now, when I'm trying to find the domain and range of the inverse function, we do not need to overthink this, okay? We already did the hard work of finding the domain and range of the original function. And remember, inverse just means we switch the domain and range. So the domain of my original function is now the range of my inverse, the range of my original is now the domain of my inverse. So if I want to find the domain of my original function, I'm going to look at the range. Now range is talking about y's. Domain is obviously talking about x's. So I keep the inequality, but this time I'm going to have an x there. Okay, so these go together. Range here and domain here match up. Now when I'm trying to find my range of my inverse, I look at the domain up here. Now obviously there's an x here, there's not going to be an x here because this is range, but I keep the same inequality. So it's going to be y is greater than or equal to 2. So this domain and this range are matching up. Now, is the inverse a function? Well, I want you to take a look at this um, equation here. x squared plus 2. If I were to graph that, hopefully you know that would give me a parabola. So, yes, the inverse is a function. So the function we started with, f of x, is also a function. The inverse is also a function. So these are inverse functions of each other. Go ahead and give these a try and show all of your work in your notes.